So, council, City Council's Committee on Gun Violence Prevention held a meeting yesterday to address plans on reducing the murder rate. Kenyatta Johnson is chairman of that committee, and thank you for being with us. Oh, thank you, Mike, and thank yeah. you, Alex, for having me this morning. Sure. It's always good to talk to you, but this is a, a tough one. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this, Councilman, for years, and frankly, I don't have a clue to how to solve this. Do you? Well, you know, Mike, you know, I wish it was one single answer, but obviously uh, we all have to, you know, roll up our sleeves and do a more of a, a better job and really getting an understanding of why are our young people picking up these guns in the first place? Why are our young people um, so angry? Uh, where are these guns coming from, which so many young people have access to? And so we have to do a better job. Our city is truly in a state of emergency when it comes to looking at this issue of um, gun violence, but most importantly, what are we doing strategically to make sure that our young people are safe during this upcoming summer? And so um, yesterday we held a hearing at the Special Committee on Gun Violence to look at recommendations regarding how can we reduce this gun violence, and most importantly, make sure our young people are safe. And we do not see 500 homicides in the year 2021. No. Right. You know what? And as many affecting our young kids and involving mm -hmm. our young kids. D d more than ever before, Alex, yeah. Mm -hmm. What were the, some of those recommendations then? Well, first, we need to begin investing on what we call leaders on the ground organizations. And these are the organizations that are on the front line, mentoring our young people, being violence interrupters and making sure that they're assisting in resolving conflicts before young people pull out guns mm -hmm. to resolve their issues. But also taking a look at this issue from a public health standpoint, um, looking at what are the root causes around the issue of trauma? We know that hurt people hurt people. And so we see a lot of angry children, and these are only children who are out there losing their lives to gun violence, but also pulling the trigger. And so let's figure out how do we get to the root causes of why these young people are carrying these guns in the first place, stopping them from resolving their conflicts uh, by using these guns. But most importantly, overall, from a law enforcement standpoint, making sure our rec centers are safe, uh, making sure there are surveillance cameras in our rec centers, a greater police presence. Councilman. But at, yes, sir. Two of these kids just got shot at a rec center. Right. Absolutely. And, and that's why, as we move forward, we need to make sure that, one, we have a stronger police presence, right, but also making sure that those neighborhood leaders that are out there doing the anti-violence work, we're going to be establishing a partnership with our local rec center organizations to make sure that they are not only being policed by the Philadelphia Police Department, but also there's a community partnership aspect because, as a community, if when we get sick and tired of being sick and tired, that's how we'll get a better handle on this particular issue. But yes, Mike, we have to all step up to the plate, roll up our sleeves, and figure out how do we reduce this sense of gun violence. Okay. To and that's the frustrating thing, though, because you want to tell kids go to the rec center; it's a safe place to go. But if it's not safe, then where do you tell them to go? Well, <laughs> you know what? Doing nothing is unacceptable, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to provide those safe spaces for our young people. Mm -hmm. So yes, we have to step up and do a better job. But doing nothing is totally unacceptable. And saying that they can't go to a recreation center or a playground is also unacceptable. So we yeah. have to right. step up and figure out a way how do we keep our young people safe. Well, what's the goal then? Because um, I know they've just started up the biweekly meetings with the city. Is it just to go over mm -hmm. and just announce? Because I've heard people saying, OK, it's good that they're talking about it more. Mm -hmm. But what is um, the goal here, or the purpose? What are we trying to achieve with these? Well, I think, I think during the weekly meetings, you'll get a chance to see transparency and accountability when okay. it comes to the city's overall strategy when it comes to addressing this issue of senseless gun violence. And so I'm sure that you will see some solutions coming forward from the administration each week as it relates to how they address the issue. But most importantly, it's about transparency and accountability. My constituents, the neighbors that, that I represent in my district, they want to know what are we doing collectively as a city when it comes to keeping our young people safe, keeping our singers safe, but most importantly, reducing this level of gun violence that we're seeing here in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, just sometimes I just want to say, can we all just all be honest with each other? Nobody knows how to fix this. Why don't we just say it? If we knew how to fix it, we would have fixed it five years ago, six years ago. We don't well, know how to know, fix it. I, I, I will say this, Mike, right? Um, it's definitely one of those complex issues that we're dealing with. We know that uh, we're the number one big city when it comes to poverty, 
right? And so in, in areas of high crime and violence, primarily are areas where there's poverty. And so uh, we have to erase that stigma by investing in our young people, erasing those who are living in poverty by pro providing them opportunities. And most importantly, Mike, like giving our young people a sense of hope. You know, a lot of them feel like they're not, um, they're not receiving the type of support um, that, that are allowed I agree with that. to become yeah. something it's more a, than what they see inside their neighborhood. So if you see- If you don't have hope, you don't have anything. Basis, absolutely. Right. I so, think the mm. frustration too is, a, a lot of these are long-term solutions. I guess there is Long no term. short term for like what's happening. Because every day we do these stories and every day we're having yes. to talk about our young people yes. dying, our people right. dying. Yes. Um, so yes. I, maybe that's what it is. We're identifying some solutions, but I guess unfortunately mm. most of them are, are long-term. It's mm. gonna take time, but it just seems like we're Almost running out of time because pe yeah, yeah, most people term. are dying. Uh, uh, that, that is correct. When you say short term, that's why I talk about you know, one, making sure that, you know, our rec centers and our playgrounds just have to be safe. Like, uh, not allowing young people to enjoy themselves is totally unacceptable. Yeah. So that's when you work with people like the Philadelphia Police Department. And, more, and also, though, yeah. we got to ask where the guns are coming from, Mike. Like, I asked it's my so friends in the true. media, ask that question. How come there are so many guns flooding the streets of Philadelphia, but no one's asking the real question, where are those guns coming from? How come our children have so, many, so much access to these mm. illegal guns? And so... That's a, a question that, that when you talk about public safety from a short term perspective, that we should be addressing aggressively yeah, on a day to day basis. True. Mm -hmm. but, there, but there's a gun laying there. It doesn't mean I have to pick it up and kill somebody with it, you know. A absolutely. So. And we, we will continue to make sure we're investing in our young people, focusing on conflict resolution, focusing yeah. on trauma, and why they're picking up guns in the first place. And so, so, Mike, damn Mahali, social it is media, too. Oh, that's, God. That's, that's a key one because social media beefs. Yeah. have played a significant role in why we see some of these shootings. And city council, I also introduced a resolution calling out Facebook, yeah. Twitter, and Instagram <clears throat> to, to, to start monitoring these young people when they're actually pulling out guns and posting them sure. on social media. Mike and Holly, I've seen people get monitored and banned from Instagram and Facebook for things that don't <laughs> even rise to the level of what I'm seeing now in terms True. of the young people. Mm -hmm. So engaging true. a social media beast by carrying these point. guns and posting, and they post the shootings yep. on social media oh, yeah. to, to taunt one another. So that's yeah. totally unacceptable. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yes, we appreciate you talking with us and the work that you're doing. And, being and you're right, it's going to take all of us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, well, keep up the good work, and we thank you for covering this and, and continue to keep speaking truth to power because we have to keep our young people safe. Yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. so important. Nothing more important.